Hi, welcome to Grow New Plants. So today I'm going to do probably my last set of cuttings for the year. And these are going to go in the mist, but I'm doing forsythia. And I've got three different varieties. And I'm going to put these into 32 cell root maker trays, which is a little bit smaller than I usually like doing with cuttings, but it just worked out with the amount of cuttings that I had to make one tray. I'm going to put them in the misting bed. And this is the third week of September, so that's probably the last set of cuttings I'm going to try. Hopefully these have enough time to root and get established so I can overwinter them and grow them out in the next spring. So I'm gonna get set up and we'll start getting them cut and stuck. So I've got three different varieties. I've got, looks like eight of these. These are a Linwood. And then I've got eight of the Cumson. And I believe the Cumsons are a variegated variety. So I'm kind of excited about those. And then I got, let's see, I got 12 or 13 of those and I got 12 or 13 of the Spect Spectabilis, I guess that's how you say that. I've never grown these before. So this is new to me, but something else, I just wanted to try some something different and see what happens. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start out with these Linwoods. That's the ones I picked up first and I made tags up. So I'm sticking eight of these. So I'm just going to put one tag per row. So that whole row and that whole row will be the same cuttings. And I bought these off of fig bin. They look really healthy. They're still green and they look fresh and everything. I soaked them in a little bit of water and these are pretty easy because they got a lot of buds on them. So of course the buds are up. So I'm gonna make sure I got them all turned the right way. There was one in there that was upside down. So good thing I checked them, huh? So I guess all I'm really gonna do is I'm just gonna make fresh cuts on all these. And I'm really not sure if you have to or not, but I'm going to. I'm gonna make a fresh cut under a node on all of these. That's a pretty tall cutting, but that's all right. I'll just let it go the way it is. So I'll do that on all of these. And then I'm gonna stick them in my rooting hormone. Uh, it's kind of hard to tell on the nodes on that one. I believe that's right. That's the bottom. Most of these got really good nodes on them with a lot of buds on them. That one has no nodes. I'm just gonna make that one short. Normally I think if I was planting these and I don't know a lot about them yet, I would probably cut them into several cuttings. But being it's late in the year and I really don't know that much about them yet, I'm just gonna stick them long and see what happens. And then if I get cuttings off of them next year or if I get plants rooted, when I do cuttings next year, I'll experiment some more with different sizes, shorter cuttings, stuff like that, where I can get more cuttings per stick. I'm not really worried about quantity on these. I just want to see if I can grow them, see how they do. So I'm just going to come in here and as tall as these are, I'm only going to get one node buried in each of these, but that's all right. Hopefully that's all it's going to take. And I'm just pressing them down in there and then firming them down a little bit. And this is my, I just use my standard mix, uh, my potting mix for starts, for cuttings and seeds, which is half perlite, half, uh, I'm sorry, yeah, half perlite and half peat moss. And then uh, I've got my Osmocote, or actually my Root Maker 6 fertilizer in there too. So these are the Cumson ones. These are the ones that are supposed to be uh, variegated leaves on them. So if you don't know anything about the forsythias, they're, they, and like I said, I've never grown them before, so I'm just going off of what I've read and videos that I've watched on them and stuff. And they're, they're one of the first plants to bloom out in the spring, and they bloom with really pretty yellow flowers all up and down the stems. And uh, I got one extra of these, so I'll just pick one out that I don't like. I'll go ahead and trim them all. But anyway, they're one of the first ones to bloom in the spring. So that always says that when these things bloom, you know winter is over with. Well, I had a bud. Some of these I'm making pretty short because I don't have buds. Some of them got more buds than others. This one, I think that's a bud there. And they got lots of bumps on them. And I'm making the assumption typically when you see that on a plant, those little bumps will act like scars. 
where they'll produce roots out of there. So, so these things, I, I'm assuming these things are going to root pretty easy, but I don't really know yet. We're going to find out, aren't we? And they don't have a whole lot of time. Still got pretty decent weather. It's fall weather here for sure, but it's uh, it's starting to cool off quickly. Okay, so I got two of these that are pretty fat and they're a little bit shorter than the others, but they'll be fine. And I got one here that still has some leaves on it, but that's fine too. I'm not worried about that. So the last ones are the Aspectabilis. So I'm going to have 12 of those too. And I'm going to go ahead and post this video just because it's getting late in the year. I'm running out of stuff to do. I still got a few things that I'm ready to take out of the misting bed to plant up that I've got hardening off right now. I got some of my crepe myrtles that are about ready. So I got, I think, 13 of these two. So we'll go ahead and cut all these. Hmm. Well, this is going to be tricky because there is no nodes down low on this one. So I'll just make a fresh cut. That may be the one we don't use. Actually, I got several of them like this. I guess the nodes are pretty far apart on these, so hopefully you don't have to have a node. And what I'm going to do, too, is I'm going to plant the ones that didn't have nodes towards the end at the, on the last row, and we'll see if it makes a difference, see if they root fine without nodes or not. That one's got a node way up there. See, some of these got a lot of nodes on them. Some of them hardly have any nodes on them. So we got, I believe there was 13 of these, so I'll get all these. So I'll go ahead and fast forward through this too. I'm just gonna get them all dipped and I'll get them all stuck in there and then we'll look at the whole tray. Okay, so I'm gonna take these three big ones here that had no nodes. Well, that one actually does. I guess really only had two. Well, here's three right here. One's two big ones and one little one that have no nodes. The only node is up at the top where the leaves are. So I'm gonna stick those on the end down here. Scoot that in where you can see it. I'm gonna stick these in here on the end. And that way, let me see if I can find another one that didn't have a node close to the end. That might've been the only ones. No, I don't see any more that were like that. So we'll just stick this other fat one down here. So we'll remember these, the end ones down here, these three up at the top away from the, these three away from the sticker or away from the label did not have any nodes except for the node on the very top. So we'll just kind of wait and see what happens. And we'll plant these other fat ones and see how they, if they do any better than the skinny ones. I guess just whichever one I end up with left. Anyway, so I got all these planted up. There's 32 of them. I'm fixing to water them in just a little bit more. I watered the soil before I, put, I stuck them. I'll add just a little bit more water and then I'm going to go stick them in the misting bed. And hopefully, hopefully like in about four weeks or so, they'll be rooted out. I don't know how quick they root in the, you know, the weather's getting cooler and the days are getting shorter so hopefully they'll still root out and do fine but i figure it's worth a try okay i appreciate you watching i'll come back and show you some results later in the fall thank you bye